Hi, greetings for the day. I'm Vijay. Me and my teammates have completed a project on forecasting of order demand in warehouse using auto regressive integrated moving average. Hope this project gives you a good insight on basics of Arima model. Project outline. Forecasting plays a very important role in the operations of management. It is important and necessary aid to planning and planning is the backbone of effective operations. Many organizations have failed because of lack of planning and we are going to see how ARIMA model helps an organization in the planning. The objective of the project is to forecast the order demand using ARIMA model for four warehouses respectively. For analysis, we have downloaded the data from Kaggle. The basis of ACF, PACF, rolling mean average, rolling standard deviation and correlogram are explained in this documentation. By the end of the documentation, you will have a clear idea about autoregressive integrated moving average model or ARIMA model, data visualization techniques, data analysis, statistical library functions and how to create interactive plots using Plotline. The main reason for choosing this data set is historical product demand is provided for seven years and for four warehouses. Before moving into project, kindly follow the instructions and install Plotlife for generation of good interactive plots. These are the five steps towards forecasting. The first and primary step is called as problem identification. Be clear on what you want to forecast. And the second step is called as data gathering. Gather as much as data possible for you to forecast. And third one is preliminary analysis or primary analysis. Here the data visualization comes into the play. And fourth one is based on the three steps we have to decide which forecasting technique we are going to use. And fifth one is based on the forecasting technique we have to construct the model. The ARIMA model provides an approach to time series forecasting. ARIMA is usually superior to exponential smoothing techniques when the data is reasonably long and correlation between past observations is stable. The flow of the program can be done in two ways and each of the ways will be explained in the program. Before moving further into the programming, these are all the packages we have actually imported into the programming before executing the program. Kindly import all the packages. This parameter code is one of the important code where you actually standardize the output of all the graphs. You can set the size of the graph and you can label the axis etc. To perform the time series operations easily, we are changing the normal date format from the CSV file to the pandas date stamp. This is the code for that and the output will be like this. Based on the panda state stamp, we can segregate into years and months. The most difficult challenge what we faced here is the numeric, PD to numeric. The data frame what we have got, the order demand was an object, which is string in the pandas world. We have to change the object into float and for that as type is not the function. We have to use PD dot numeric data frame of order demand visualization part we have actually developed an interactive for loop where for all the warehouses we can get the plots easily this is the data visualization for product category for each and every year for this warehouse j for warehouse s product category for each and every year and one of the advantage of plot lie is that you can actually select the data what you want to see. I don't want to see year 2016. So like this we can use plot lie. I just want to see 2012. This is one interactive way of using the charts by plot lie. We are writing the functions for four different warehouses. We are actually writing the function for four different warehouses and we are concatenating with respect to the years. We are concatenating it vertically. And we are actually graphically representing each and every warehouse demand in the time series model using the same plot line. And here also we have defined a functions for that. This is the representation for order demand of warehouse A actual demand, three period moving average and three period moving average of standard deviation. 
for warehouse J, same for warehouse S, and for warehouse C. You can actually see this in the plot line for warehouse J. This is the actual and three period moving average and three period moving standard deviation. In Plotly, we get the values for each and every point and we can select the frame what we want to view. And after plotting the actual three period moving average and three period standard deviation, we, we move on to Dickey Fuller test statistic. This is one of the most important test statistic when it comes to time series model. We compare the p-value. If p-value is lesser than 0 0.05, then we can conclude that the graph what we obtain is not stationary. The basis of time series analysis or the ARIMA model analysis is the model must be stationary. We have to convert it to stationary by performing differencing technique. So for each and every warehouse using this command, we are actually generating the Dickey Fuller test and we are getting the p-value and we are getting the critical values. For, for Dickey Fuller test of the yes warehouse, we see that p-value is 0.266, which is way greater than its critical value and which is greater than 0.05. So to perform the analysis for the yes warehouse, we have to decompose the data. Decomposition is actually done using this code. Decompose is equal to seasonal decompose of the varrows and order demand. And we have to provide the frequency. This frequency is nothing but the time periods. Based on the decomposition, we arrive at observed value, the trend, the seasonality, and the residuals. Now, based on the decomposition, we have to plot the ACF plot and PACF plot. ACF and PACF are most important plots when it comes to time series. This only helps us to find the Q value, P value and D value. This is the ACF plot. This is PCF plot. For all warehouses, we have plotted the seasonality. ACF and PCF, ACF, PACF, ACF, PACF, ACF, PACF. As we said earlier, the problem can be solved in two ways. So one is by ACF and PACF plots, we can manually choose the PDQ or else we could use auto ARIMA function to choose PDQ method by generating plotting diagnostics. Plotting diagnostics is explained in the documentation. You can read further on plotting diagnostics by reading the documentation. These are all the plotting diagnostics code and this auto arima this finds out the order seasonal order aic bic we have to choose the lowest aic and bic score for forecasting the data this code is for the final forecasting we are training the data and testing the data in the above snippet 70 percent of the train model is used to test and forecast more than 30 percent of the data the prediction results are obtained and converted into a data frame. These are all the results from analysis. This is the actual and this curve is the forecast for Barrows A. You can actually see this in the browser. After we run this code, we are getting the forecasted demand for Barrows J, for Barrows C, for varrows A and for varrows yes, this will be done for six to seven months. So these are all the references and this is the instruction on how to run the code. We consider this as a good project because of the following reason. When it comes to ARIMA forecasting, not every material available on the internet is based on Python. It is based on R. This documentation, it, it conveys entirely based on the python these are the suggestions since the warehouses of four uh, if the warehouses of four locations are given we can actually plot the coordinates on the map and find out the demand 
This could be extended to the suppliers and customers involving four varoses on the product demand. 